everyone. So um, it usually takes a minute or two for everyone to kind of make their way in. So as we are waiting for everyone to join, um, if you can let me know you can hear and see us okay, that would be fantastic. Um, just want to make sure everything's working before we jump right in with questions and things like that. Awesome. Thank you. Oh, wonderful. I see some folks from um, our earlier webinar all about um, architecture when we met with um, faculty Amy Culper. Um, if you weren't able to join, we can send you a recording. So feel free to email us and we'll send you that over. Um, and as we give it just another minute or two, um, I always like to, to see where you all are tuning in from. Um, I think we're all in Providence, Rhode Island. Yep, okay, awesome, all, <laughs> we're all in Providence. Um, so where are you all tuning in from? I always like to see if, you know, time zone is a thing as well. It's evening here, but um, oh, awesome. We have some folks from Texas, LA. Oh, awesome, someone from Colombia. awesome. The Netherlands. I visited Columbia about, well, I guess, two years ago now. Uh, Delaware, DC, oh, fantastic. China, New Orleans, yeah, wonderful. It's always great to see a great mix of, you know, different places, different countries, that's awesome. Yeah, <laughs> um, awesome. So I think that, you know, we can definitely get started, you know, just because I want to make sure that we use the most of our time together. Um, I'm going to stop sharing my screen so you can see everyone's lovely faces. Um, but hi, everyone. I'll start by introducing myself. Um, I'm Isabel Sanchez. I'm an admissions officer at RISD. I'm also an alumni. I graduated from the painting department in 2015, but today we're going to be talking all about architecture majors with our current architecture students. So I'm going to pass it to Clarence to introduce himself. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm Clarence. I go by he, him, his. So I am a fourth year senior in architecture, so four or five years. And I am one of the two department reps for the Student Alliance for Architecture. Awesome. Thank you. So next we'll go to Sarah. Hi, my name is Sarah. Uh, I'm from New Jersey. I mainly spend time around Mississippi when I'm not in Providence these days. Uh, I was originally in architecture. I'm now in printmaking. Um, I am mostly going to be hanging out around in the group chat for that reason. But if anyone has questions about switching majors or whatnot, been there, done that. Um, yeah, been all around. Shreya, you're next. <laughs> Hi, um, I'm Shreya. I'm from New Delhi, India. I'm a senior currently in interior architecture. So just a different perspective on architecture. Um, and I was also the student rep for the interior architecture department for the last two years. But now I've become the student rep for the board of trustees, academic and student affairs committee. So just a little shift in position. Awesome, thanks, Taj. Hey everyone, my name is Taj. Uh, I have he, him pronouns. I'm from the Bronx, New York, and I am a fifth year super senior in architecture. And I don't do anything as interesting as Shreya, but <laughs> um, I've been living in Providence for the past three years, I guess, or at least I've stayed every summer since like my sophomore year. So excited to be here. Awesome. Thank you. So today we're, you know, we're all here and available to really answer any questions you have about, you know, RISD in general, you know, maybe you want to hear more about the experience of transitioning to college, you know, that first year experience, you know, maybe wanting to hear more about choosing architecture and what that department's like in an art school. Um, so, you know, please submit any questions you have, you can do so through the Q&A tab down below. Um, and, you know, we're here to kind of answer whatever's on your mind. Um, so I do want to get started with one, um, 
one first question. Um, so, you know, for people who are currently in high school, uh, what do you recommend that that they kind of work on or, you know, yeah, kind of focus on, you know, thinking ahead to wanting to major in architecture? Okay, uh, it's still kind of loaded. Um, I know for me, I've thought about architecture for like most of my life, kind of. Like I played a lot of The Sims when I was younger, so I kind of set myself up for that. Uh, but I definitely didn't do anything to prepare myself for architecture at RISD. Uh, maybe the most was to do like pre-college in architecture. Uh, but in all honesty, I would like find what it is about architecture that you love, like the like casual things, things are like actually like really fun before you get to like the academic aspects of architecture to kind of remind you like why you did this. If you do go down a certain road, I think that's one thing I would do. I think that's a great point as well. You know, I, I do just want to remind you all that um, with RISD, you don't apply directly to a major. You don't start directly in a major. You're going to enter into experimental and foundation studies and you actually declare your major later um so you have kind of that freedom to change your mind or um to go in different directions um since you'll be guaranteed a spot in whatever major you choose um so keep that in mind yes you don't have to apply directly to architecture awesome so First question or second question, um, do art schools employ a different architectural pedagogy or like style of teaching um, than a traditional university? Um, I think we can probably also expand this question to be, you know, maybe were any of you looking at, you know, just traditional universities for, for school as well? What, what kind of made you choose art school and RISD? Um, so yeah, I can answer that. Um, so as someone who applied to RISD exclusively for the architecture program, I felt like what makes our pedagogy different is, of course, foundation year, and I guess the diversification before you specialize and go into a major. Um, and so for me, that application process kind of meant I was coming for architecture, but the art was a bonus. Or I guess or an opportunity to expand on things I had never really tried before, because um, in high school, I was very much a science person um and so yeah that's pretty much one of the core differences is that before you even get into the major you're going to try out a lot of things and of course in the future you get to incorporate some of those things into architecture work um yeah um i personally think that um architecture in art school is just has a different perspective to everything so you do learn like the traditional ways you learn the draft and you learn the softwares but at the same time like all our professors still encourage us you know if you think that you can rep represent this idea better in a painting go for it or a sculpture go for it so it's like you still get to work on other modes i guess of art while still studying architecture seriously yeah absolutely did you um okay sorry just wasn't sure if anyone oh actually to... yeah sure actually i could totally add to that um that becomes way more important, I guess, with the architecture, because for example, you have fifth year thesis. And like, for example, last year's thesis students, like it was not like, no one really designed a building per se. There was so much drawn on to like create, you know, their final work. We had students doing ceramic pieces for their thesis. We had students doing textiles things for their thesis. And so that's kind of how like the foundation here in the art school, I guess, establishment kind of comes back to give you more in architecture. Absolutely. Wonderful. And I'm sure we'll cer certainly kind of circle back to kind of what makes architecture at RISD and art school unique. Um, so next question. Um, why did you decide to study architecture after the first general year? Um, I would kind of like to hear from everyone if that's okay. We can kind of almost again, kind of go in the order where uh, you introduced yourself. So if Clarence, if you don't mind <laughs> starting us off. Yeah, sure. Um, so like I said already, I applied to RISD specifically for the architecture program. Um, and, you know, in foundation year, when you go through design, drawing, and spatial dynamics, naturally, I, I gelled more with spatial because it just 
suited the kind of work I did before and I did what I wanted to go into. Um, at the same time, though, I very much gave Foundation Year the opportunity to convince me to do something else. Um, I, I certainly liked metalsmithing, I liked furniture making, and I really enjoyed ceramics. And, you know, I really appreciate those things. Um, but I went into architecture because, again, it just seemed like my best match. I certainly asked a lot of questions before joining the major. And, you know, once I was in and we started working, I couldn't really imagine doing anything else. Absolutely. Yeah. So, Sarah, I know you didn't stay in architecture, but no. <laughs> I would certainly love to hear, you know, what made you first uh, choose architecture? Absolutely. I mean, um, the really cool thing about RISD is that a lot of people do not, most people do not have this like very, you know, linear point A to point B journey. Most people don't go in thinking that they're going to study what they end up studying. Um, and freshman year, when you're doing foundations, uh, like Clarence said, you know, the best thing to do is to really to go in giving RISD the opportunity to change your mind about what you think that you're going to be uh, getting into. Um, and I had a bit of a journey where, you know, I applied to RISD as a painting major. Again, not that it matters what major you apply to RISD as. Um, I, you know, spent a lot of my later years in high school and freshman year um, working architecturally and uh, mainly in terms of concept and history, which were a couple clues that I didn't want to be like doing plans and sections all the time. But um, I, you know, I went into the department and had some fun, <laughs> <laughs> did my best, uh, figured out that it wasn't for me eventually. But yeah, you know, that's kind of how college should be. Shouldn't be too easy. <laughs> Absolutely. I think that's a great point that, you know, for most people, they end up at least considering majors that maybe they weren't originally intending on, on, on going into. But um, Shreya, I'd love to hear what made you choose interior architecture. Um, well, when I was applying to RISD, interior architecture was something that stood out to me at that point as well. And I noticed that during foundation studies, like all my work was being gravitated towards like more buildings, more like symmetry, straight lines and stuff like that. And I mean, in the middle, during winter session, I did glass blowing. So I actually was in two minds. I was like, should I double major? Because I loved it so much. But at the same time, I think architect, interior architecture just drew me in, like with its whole um, curriculum and just the work that's being done and what the future opportunities are. So just sticking to all of that, I'm still in interior architecture. And also because it was four years and not five. So <laughs> that was a point to be noted. Absolutely. <laughs> Taj, over to you. Okay. Um... I think mine is kind of similar to Clarence, where I definitely came in to see expecting to go in architecture. And like, I didn't have much of like an art background in high school or anything. Uh, but once I got to RISD, I like figured out I had so many other interests that weren't architecture. <laughs> so I think I felt like a little overwhelmed when it came time to like, choose a major. I like thought about furniture and graphic design and printmaking. And I was like, don't know which one to pick. I think I honestly picked architecture because it was a safe choice for me. <laughs> Um, I do not regret my choice, not actively at least, but um, I still get to do other things outside of the department, or at least I've like made sure I get that chance. And I still like kind of the, like architectural mindset. I don't know if I could call it that, but I think it is a certain way of thinking. And I like kind of applying that to other things. So I think for that sense, like feels good. Absolutely. And I think um, that's that's great to mention also kind of um, circling back also to, to what you said, Clarence, we have a question that's saying, as someone who is more of a math science person in high school, so maybe not coming from a like drawing painting background, um, what kind of things did you submit in your portfolio when you applied? Yeah, sure. Um, so I guess 
<laughs> I cheated in that I took a gap year after high school. Um, but really to answer just this, just just this question of obviously what do I want to do, but how do I prepare for it? Um, and so yeah, that year I really spent, you know, besides working and getting experience, really just putting together a portfolio. Um, so how I tackled it was to show range. Um, so I did a lot of things like drawing, sculptures, painting, like the full Monty photography, um, and it worked. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, that's how I approached it. I tried to show as much creative range, and I guess I really sold myself as being willing to learn art specifically. Um, and I think that's kind of what sold it off. Yeah, absolutely. I think to kind of echo Clarence, I think showing off that you have that capability to be comfortable at RISD in this environment, being able to like pick up art and design kind of is the main thing. Um, I think for me, I was like, I did a pre-college program at a different school. <laughs> so that like kind of built on my portfolio. Uh, so that almost was like cheating in a weird way because I don't think most of my portfolio was from like, art classes in high school. Uh, but I was able to still use what I did there and kind of like make a portfolio out of that. Yeah, I think both are great points. You know, taking a gap year, maybe trying pre-college at, you know, whatever program is the best fit for you. But yeah, trying all different ways of working. That's always great to see from an admissions perspective. I can definitely agree with that. Um, so this next question is for everyone, but especially you, Shreya. <laughs> so um, this question, I was reviewing interior architecture and I found out it has almost nothing to do with interior design. Are there any things that they have in common? Um, and yeah, maybe you can kind of talk about the similarities and differences of those two disciplines. Yeah, of course. Um, I think when people think about interior architecture, they get confused very often with interior designing. So just to make it clear, it's very, very different. Um, interior architecture is more all about sustainability, building from the inside out. So usually the facades of the building don't change, the board, I mean, the walls don't change, and you basically need to understand how to maximize the interiors of a space without, uh, and obviously making it to the program that needs to be fit into the building without actually breaking anything on the exterior and interior design is more like which colors would look good, which sofa would look good, like what's looking great. Like it's more aesthetic rather than interior architecture where we have all the working knowledge of an architect as well. So we do have the drafting classes, we have the softwares, we work with every single detail, the renderings. Um, so we do all of that as well. So it's a mixture, but at the same time with similarities, we do have a few classes that focus on color and lighting and just um, overlaying different things on one another um, just so that you get the interior design aesthetic aspect as well because that's all obviously very important when you're working with a interior project. Wonderful, absolutely. Yeah, so um, we also have a question kind of speaking to that as well. Um, what are the main differences between the interior architecture and architecture program? Um, and I think I want to kind of tack on another question to this. Um, since you do have that whole first year to make your decision, so you certainly don't have to choose right now. <laughs> um, you know, are there any ways for folks to kind of get to know those majors before they choose? So um, yeah, so starting with, you know, what's what's the difference between these two majors? Um, well, I think a few differences are that the architecture program is five years and the interior architecture program is four years. So you do graduate with a BFA uh, rather than a bachelor's in architecture. Um, but at the same time, you do end up doing a master's in architecture if that's what you please. So graduating from both majors, you still have to do a two years or a master's of architecture. So you sort of end up in the same place, I guess. Um, but at the same time, architecture is more building ground up completely, like redesigning everything. And as I explained earlier, that interior architecture is more about working with the internals of the building rather than breaking the whole thing down or starting from ground up. Yeah, I can also supplement that. Um, 
So I guess one of the core differences is like Shay already mentioned the degree. So we get a Bachelor of Architecture, which is why we have the fourth year that's focused on thesis and directed research. Um, and so, yeah, that is technically the better degree. Um, one, for the reason of, yeah, it's its own Bachelor of Architecture, but two, as a person with a Bachelor of Architecture, you can, you can actually practice an architectural designer as opposed to having to get a grad, going to grad school and then getting a license before you could become a practicing architect. So in that case, you could go straight from your Bachelor of Architecture to a firm and work under a firm um, much faster than having to get your own license and design your own buildings and solve your own plans, which is one of the core, I suppose, perks as far as, you know, um, licensure goes. Um, but like Shreya said, yeah, they're kind of different, I guess, in that we create structures entirely from scratch, whereas interior architecture tends to go for the path of reuse and readaptation. Wonderful. Just to add to that, the um, interior architecture students can also like work in firms. So like it's not to scare anyone off that you can't work um, after undergrad or even get internships during. Um, so you can work in firms with the obviously differences like signing off your own drawings and starting your own drawings um, is something that you wouldn't be able to do with an interior architecture degree, just with an interior architecture degree. So that is definitely a main difference but it doesn't limit your job opportunities when it comes to applying to architecture firms and working for them. Thank you. So kind of shifting gears, um, kind of speaking more generally, how was the transition from high school to college? And this is certainly open to, to everyone. This is, um... I mean, this is such a question that this is this is hard to give a good answer to because your 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 transition from high school to college is going to be totally specific to you as an individual. You know, uh, it really like varies for absolutely everybody. Like I, you know. I had a very easy time adjusting to college. I was ready to get out of Dodge <laughs> as soon as I graduated high school. Um, so I, you know, I got here and I had a blast and I was able to uh, readjust to the, the new schedule and the workload and the whole situation quite easily. But I could also see that, you know, if you you know, are coming from much farther away, maybe, and you are, you know, home away for the first time, it might be sort of a big jump going into all these new things. And also you are doing RISD foundations and you are getting work to the bone. Um, so there are a lot of ways it could go, really depends on you as an individual. Um, but my advice is just like, have, keep the good vibes, go into, <laughs> go into it with a good mindset be positive about freshman year. And you know, everyone gets a little overworked and no matter what college you go to, truly, no matter what, there are gonna be times freshman year when you're feeling like tired and you wanna go home. Everyone in the world is feeling like that. Don't worry about it. <laughs> um, I yeah. guess I can give a different perspective as an international. Sorry, do you wanna go first? Oh no, no, sorry. <laughs> All right, so just, I think coming from India, so that's a little away. Um, the transition was, I mean, it wasn't as tough because I had visited the US before, but it was just, um, it was just the feeling of not being able to go back home and like just home being so far away. So definitely that was something that I was dealing with, but at the same time, I think I settled in pretty quickly as well, just because of all the icebreakers that we had and like how we had, just how much of an effort is you made to make all the students come in together and like just be interacting with one another. So I think I made friends pretty quickly, which made it a lot easier, the whole process, because at the end of the day, you as a batch are going through the same thing together. So everybody's usually crying at the same time or like everybody's laughing at the same time. Or everybody's just doing everything together. So it makes it a lot easier. 
but just yeah so that's something that coming internationally obviously dealing with like time difference and like you know your family being so far away so stuff like that was a little emotional in the first semester but after that you just get so used to it and then you're at a point where like okay no I don't feel like going back right now just because you're having such a blast here but yeah <laughs> yeah I was gonna say that um kind of echoing the two of you like there's a lot of growing pains I guess but I would say like pretty much every fall semester is like a little tougher than ever. And then like come to spring, like I feel like at least for me, it's like easier because like I already got back to the groove of it by then. And, like I feel that every fall and it's been, I'm in my fifth fall right now. And <laughs> like, I'm feeling it kind of like tug along as well. But I'd say like, if that's any shred of like hope, it does get easier. That sounds corny, but like <laughs> you'll feel a lot better like the longer you're here. And honestly, freshman year, I think it's such like a culture shock to where it's like truly only three weeks and then you're already like in the middle of it. And it's like, you're closer to the end than you are to the beginning. So if that like helps at all. And this is ultimate opportunity to plug orientation because they're a team I love to work with all the time. Um, so RISD orientation is, you know, quite literally designed to help you all get acquainted to RISD in the best way possible. Um, and, and not just saying that because someone who loved it going into it and has worked with them for like three years now, like it's definitely like such, such a great program, like, and there's multiple variations. So there's orientation itself, which everyone does. International students kind of get a separate version as well to really help them with that expanded context of coming from a different place. And we even have programs for, you know, first generation students, students of color, just to understand that everyone, yeah, like Sarah said, is probably going to go through a different variation of the struggle. And so to help everyone get to the same footing. And like Shreya mentioned, you'll all be in the space together. So you're never truly alone. But orientation, well, <laughs> immaculate. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you. Yeah. So um, we've gotten kind of multiple questions with with a similar kind of slant so i'm going to kind of mush them together um you know what was your favorite assignment or moment or just general favorite thing about the architecture program <laughs> um yeah so this i think is like especially for for taj and clarence here you go um let me see uh I, I would say I've done all the core studios in architecture. There are three, and then we take three advanced studios. I have also done all three of those. Uh, I'm really enjoying thesis now, but I think my favorite one was last spring where I had to design a campus for grad students. Oh, Clarence is in it. So <laughs> Clarence is exactly what I'm gonna talk about. Uh, but we had to design a uh, campus for grad students in like upstate New York. I think that was probably one of my most enjoyable ones probably because of Professor Hans he was like pretty pretty like easy to deal with never really like annoyed me which is like, probably said something more positive than that but <laughs> that should have been at the end but um, in terms of the actual project itself I think uh, we use like Maya which is like a program that most animators use uh, it's like pretty illustrative pretty fun to use and work with and it's something I feel like I didn't get a chance to do in architecture and like it felt kind of really rich gap I got to play around with all these different forms and so I was like working on a pretty huge scale and it felt like kind of like a giant toy box honestly and it felt pretty loose like I was able to do almost anything I wanted to and I really felt the project move along like every time so I think that was like one of my favorites. Yeah like Taz mentioned I was in that class as well and I agree it was very much here are the tools go forth and prosper um which is kind of the nature of advanced studios they're different semester to semester and you know you'll be pretty deep into architecture when you get into those but i think my favorite class so far was actually one of the core studios that was um urban ecologies um because architecture up till that point had been working with hypotheticals and i guess in very constructed situations but urban ecologies dealt with like real people in like in a real place and like everything mattered, which to me is how I think architecture should work. So like the place, how much do people earn, health situations, costs of housing, living, was all involved in this one studio. And that to me really made it like work that was enjoyable because like, like there was a right way to do things. Um, and yeah, that's what really did it for me. 
Absolutely. And I think that's a good um, segue to this next question. Um, to what extent do RISD students explore urban design or focus on architectural fabrics in addition to traditional architectural thinking? Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> Sounds like yeah. someone's okay. as an architect. Yeah, it does, uh, yeah. We see you. <laughs> I'd say in my personal opinion, RISD architecture has more or less only started getting better, I guess, at expanding what they include as architecture. Um, so like, you know, before it used to be just the Urban Ecologies core studio that kind of dealt with this. And as great as it is, a semester I don't think was long enough, you know, to explore the larger context of different populations, people and urban fabrics. Um, and so as great as that class is, yeah, I felt like there could have been more done to expand on that thinking. And they are doing that. Um, so there has been the introduction of race and modern architecture as its own class, you know, expanding on that context in architecture history, which used to be very white historically. Um, and other things, you know, such as new seminars, we have, you know, different, I guess, speakers or themes every semester around certain topics. And like over time, they've definitely been inclusive of urban fabrics and of course, just people in more context um, over the past few years. And, you know, if that trend continues, I'd say, you know, the opportunity to do more expansive work outside of pure architecture thinking really grows um, semester semester. Yeah, I would say they're um, a bit more additive to our early curriculum, uh, but similar to what Clarence said, like there will be advanced studios that get as specific as what your interest would be. There's like however you view architecture. I guess the only thing is like what advanced studios are offered that semester. Uh, but there are also other like, um, I guess there's seminars, which aren't as big as studios as six credits, but they're like seminars on topics that like also touch on like urban ecology, or I guess not urban ecology, but like urban design. I think there's also a class where we started working with the landscape architecture department, uh, which is only for grads, but there was a point where we started overlapping. So I think as we move forward, it's gone a bit better. Absolutely. Yeah, and that was a great question. So far, all fantastic questions, so keep them coming. Um, next, what kind of relationship do you have with your professors in architecture or interior ar architecture? Are they aloof, cordial, friendly? <laughs> if you could kind of speak more to, to that kind of dynamic. Um, so interior architecture is a relatively smaller department than architecture is. So for us in particular, like we only had 15 students in our entire batch. So 15 students getting into interior architecture together. And then we also get further divided. So now at this point, um, during junior year, second half and senior year, you sort of get mixed with the uh, students who've come for their masters. Mm -hmm. So you all tend to study at the same time, but with our professors, um, we're always in studios where maximum there'll be 15 students to one professor, as well as one TA, which is a teaching assistant, which I think is great because our professors really take the time to like sit with us, discuss our work individually, no matter how long it takes. And that's what we do usually in critiques as well. So even if it takes like 45 minutes per student, we'll go through each and every step of what you presented, what can be done better. And even if you're like emailing them, you know, whether it's over the weekend, after class hours or during the week, they always, always respond and they are always ready to hop on a Zoom call as well, just to, you know, make sure that you're content with what you're doing and what you're working on. So in general, I think our professor are very, very involved with what you're doing. And they also try to understand the character of each student and what they're trying to do. Um, and nobody ever like pushes you into like, uh, okay, you're coming first in class, you're coming like third in class, there's no rank system. It's all about your personal progress, which I really, really appreciate about like the RISD, um, I guess the RISD curriculum in general. But yeah, that's about interior architecture. Yeah, I would say it's pretty much similar to what Shreya said in architecture. Um, yeah, I think my year at least was like maybe 35 students, like in coming into architecture. And 
it was easy to section it off to where you got pretty, you guys know your professor pretty well. I think the general overseas ratio was like nine to one students to faculty. So like you definitely feel that my thesis cohort right now is like eight of us. And we, and my, our department at Amy is my thesis cohort rep. I'm using too many words, but like I think Thursday and pretty, pretty personal. I, she's known me for a while because I've been in the department for five years and we talk, but also you have all these professors, you start to gain a relationship with them. Um, they're also your guest critics for other classes. You see them around, walking around. So I'd say it's pretty, I don't know if cordial is the right word. It's probably better than cordial. <laughs> uh, it's like a pretty, I want to say casual, but it's like definitely for the same basis. Everyone's pretty all right with each other. Uh, I would also say like a handful of them feel young. I don't know if I'm just thinking one person, but like I think they also know, <laughs> like, like they understand what it's like to be an architecture student. So they allow them to come with that mentality as well. So. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, that's interesting. So um, even in majors outside of architecture, yeah, you, you know, it might, that might be a transition for you as well. You know, you don't have to call your professors like, professor last name or like Mr. or Mrs. last name the way you may have to in high school. First name basis, you can speak really freely with your professors. <laughs> you know, you don't have to be quite as as formal maybe as you're used to in high school. At least that's true of painting. Is that true of architecture too, would you say? Cool, yeah. I would say I'm pretty aloof more than the professors. So I don't know <laughs> if anyone's gonna be aloof. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Um, so this one is really kind of, yeah, open to everyone. So what non-architecture related electives have you taken? And um, yeah, I, so I don't think you would necessarily have to list out literally every single one you have, but maybe the ones that really kind of like stick out in your mind. I can go first. Um... Uh, so pretty much every student at RISD is required to take a course outside of their major. I believe it's 12 credits. I, I, I believe so. Uh, but I've taken, I believe, 21 <laughs> outside of my major. Um, I do a lot in printmaking. So I've done most of their like core classes and a few of their um, more advanced ones. Uh, so I think one of the more fun ones, fun ones I've taken was like printmaking's um, experimental print class, which I kind of use to operate with architecture, which is pretty fun. I was using a lot of their like uh, their digital lab. I can't call it a digital lab, but they had like a laser cutter, and I was able to do like a lot with that and kind of bring that technology in with architecture. So that was really fun. We, I would love to hear more about that <laughs> if that's okay. Um. Yeah. So yeah, similar like Taz mentioned, twelve credits. So that comes out to about four classes over the course of your time at RISD. Um, so I've done a good range of stuff, mostly things I was interested in before I got into architecture or I got to try out over winter session. That's another thing. Winter session is like your opportunity to try lots of different classes. So look out for those. Um, so I've done digital ceramics like fairly recently. So that was really cool. I got to like design things and 3D print them with clay and then have them glaze and fire it, which is really fun. I've done furniture design, I've done metal smithing. Um, yeah, I think those are the three studio electives I've tried. And, you know, there's way more than that. There's so more. I remember once there was like a whole theater performance, like a performing arts workshop one winter session, which is hilarious to go check out. Um, well, just adding to that, I've done like a class in glass blowing which was a lot of fun. Um, I'm currently doing photography as well. And I've already like finished all my credits um, for outside major, but I mean, you can take as many classes as you'd like. So it's great. So I did like photography and then I even did a travel abroad program during winter session once. So it was literally just taking your um, working knowledge of, and it was, sort of theoretical architecture base but at the same time it was mainly just a travel trip to go out and like explore and like study at the same time so it was kind of related to architecture but at the same time it was a completely different experience so that's also something to look at yeah absolutely but yeah Taj I want to hear a little bit more 
about textiles and architecture coming together. That sounds like two things I don't think of going coming together. So. Oh, sorry. I did like a class that was more on like technology with printmaking and architecture. Uh, but speaking of textiles and architecture, I know they've collaborated multiple times uh, for like different types of studios. Um, if anyone ever visits RISD, um, there's like two models in the Woods Carry building that was a part of that project. Uh, I can't speak too much about it, <laughs> but I know it was like kind of an advanced studio where students in textiles and architecture kind of worked together. I believe they redesigned or at least did something with our nature lab building, which is Waterman. Um, I cannot explain, I wish I could explain more about it, but it seemed really interesting <laughs> and something that you don't always see paired together. And I also know there's another person in my thesis cohort that's also really interested in apparel and um, textiles. So he's working with that knowledge as well. So I also think thesis is a good time to really bring in everything else you like outside of architecture into that discipline. I think a lot of students see that. So. Absolutely. So this is certainly kind of overlaps with what you all just spoke to, but um, do you get the opportunity to collaborate with other majors on projects? I think the short answer is yes. <laughs> but if anyone wants to maybe talk about an experience that they have. Um, not an experience I had personally, but I know just last semester, um, I think Hyundai had like a whole collaborative thing they did with RISD and different majors. And so I believe it was architecture, industrial design, textiles, I think was one. And I forgot the fourth one, it was four majors. Um, but they more or less collabed on like, yeah, different, I guess, schemes with the company. And it was like a semester long collaborative, pro collaborative project. Um, so yeah, they happen and they can be like, I guess, you know, very specific. So like meeting a specific design goal, they can be very like explorative where like you try different things together. Um, I'd also say I haven't necessarily like worked formally in like a collaborative project with someone outside of architecture, but I'm always talking to like my friends and other majors and kind of like getting whatever information I can from them. Like especially printmaking, but like a friend in FAV that helped me when I was using that Maya program. Uh, friends like graphic design, because like I could design certain things. So I think graphically I could use some help sometimes. So talking to friends there always helps. I think that sense of collaboration is like always happening since you carry out with friends after a freshman year that go to different majors, but you still have that connection. So that's like always happening. Awesome, thank you. Um, this is a question for Shreya. I'm reading the question as written. Um, how was the cultural impact for you? I assume they mean when you transition to RISD and, and going to school abroad. Um, well, I did most of my high school. I mean, I did all of my high school um, in India. So coming to the US, I did have a culture shock for sure, just because as you mentioned earlier that, you know, talking or like addressing my professors on a first name basis was really weird to me. So sometimes I would also be like shy about it. And I would just like try and figure out my issues on my own without trying to have to address the professor, which I realized was just um, freshman share, I guess, at the time. Um, but other than that, like, obviously, um, back home, you're always like in a sheltered space, you're always, you know, um, doing stuff with your family. So once you come here, it's all about like learning how to live on your own. Um, and I'm just talking about like the cultural shift from an Indian household, I guess, to the US, because that's what I can talk about. So like just learning how to do like how to cook, how to do my laundry, um, just general like daily stuff and just learning to be on your own and managing. I did so have a little bit of a culture shock at the time, but then I think as the weeks progressed, I got more comfortable and just got, um, yeah, I guess I got more comfortable just talking to my professors and it's been great. Thank you. Yeah. So switching topics. Did you all know how to use the software and programs in architecture and interior <laughs> architecture, or did you learn how to use the different CAD programs at RISD? Yeah, so I think all of us 
are in the same boat. None of us knew what we were doing um, when the software started. But I don't know about architecture, but in interior architecture, we did have classes where they did teach us like Rhino step by step or stuff like that. So we had a class just for Rhino. So and even if you do have the working knowledge before you come to RISD, um, all the professors in the class will always treat you like you have no knowledge. So they always start from the basis, like not in a bad way, just like they start from scratch. So they'll go through tutorial after tutorial and just literally share their screen and teach you every single thing. Um, but that's how you end up learning your softwares. And obviously you have to put in the effort yourself as well to learn. Um, I'll also say just while we're on a topic that I think most departments at RISD use Rhino if you're using any sort of like modeling software. So in terms of like CAD and SketchUp, we don't necessarily have like a class teaching us how to use those programs. Uh, but some students, of course, know how to use it, uh, but it is mostly kind of going out of your way to learn it. I think the, the mentality for it is that if you learn how to use Rhino, you can use them all. So I do not know how true that is, but that's kind of the mindset we're all in. And that's like where most people are like at comfortably or comfortability wise in terms of like 3D software modeling. Absolutely. Yeah, I'll add how it's slightly different to let's say a major like ID, which is pretty intensive as far as software goes. So yeah, like I feel like our training in this software is very specialized. It's not how to use Rhino, like as a class, it's how to use Rhino to do this specific thing for architecture. And that's kind of how you start picking things up. Um, but recently, and I can say this as a student rep, we've kind of been pushing RISD architecture to have more classes, like specifically for learning these things, but also to have a wider range of software. Um, because, you know, Rhino is for the most part an industry standard. But there are also like new waves of software that are important to know, especially for trying to work. Um, and so, yeah, we're trying to get them to expand the learning range because it's good to know. And also it's good to put in your work, like being able to express more of your ideas more efficiently is always a great thing. Absolutely. Yeah. So I think this is a really interesting question. Um, so how have your views on architecture changed since attending RISD? And I think Correct me if I'm wrong, person asking this question. Um, I think they mean like, just like what you thought architecture was versus what you kind of are thinking about architecture now. How has that changed? Or has that changed? Maybe it hasn't. I, <laughs> I can see Clarence also thinking. Um, I can personally say, uh, of course, like, for architecture, I started like looking at the Sims. It was obviously very different. Um, and I think being in a program, I've learned that I do not want to be a practicing architect and that I do not want to go into the fields. I don't plan on getting my license. Um, I, I will technically can if I have to remember to take the test, but <laughs> that will not be my plan after I graduate. And I think that's just how much I said there's like so many different aspects of architecture and like so much that you learn being in a program that's pretty applicable to most things. And I would even say that our department at Amy, like she doesn't necessarily practice architecture, but she's like a huge theorist essentially, and she knows a lot about the history of architecture. And I think that's one really interesting avenue to do. But also, I think being like a practicing designer is also something I'd much rather do. I forgot what the question was. I realize I'm just rambling, but. No, I think this is all so interesting. I encourage all of you to ramble as much as possible. This is very <laughs> pro rambling space. <laughs> but the question was, um, has your idea of architecture changed since like pre RISD to, to now? Yeah, I would say my view changed like multiple times like a roller coaster. I think I went in thinking it'd be fun. I got there, I realized it wasn't. <laughs> And then I was forced to become like a, I was forced to become an architect. Then maybe I, next year I realize a lot of people that have an architecture degree do different things. So I feel a lot better about what I can do. So I think just in terms of just having a bachelor's in architecture, I think it's pretty wide and open. And I do feel like I'm trained for multiple things. I don't want to suck a jack of all trades, but like a, a comfortable jack of all trades. I don't know. <laughs> Casual jack of all trades. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to agree with Taj in that my view of architecture has changed 
tremendously over the last few years. Um, and I think, you know, as far as being an architect, the capital A, and I mean, that's, that's how, what we call it. Uh, yeah, I've come to realize that is not ideal for me. Um, not so much in that I wouldn't like to be an architect, but in that I've come to, I came to learn that, you know, architecture is how I thought about it was not always the most ethical or most efficient practice, you know, in that it, it very much involved, you know, removal of people, destruction of places, ignoring cultures. And, you know, this is kind of what, I guess, the perks of doing, I guess, a liberal arts education, getting art history, getting all this context, like, like informs you about is that architecture isn't a very clean major. And so I suppose how my view has changed is that I'd, I'd like to make it more so, you know, I'd like it to be, I mean, inclusive is kind of overused, but in inclusive in the sense that it's less destructive and more ethical because, you know, there's, there's only so much space you can physically occupy with a building. And I feel like the age of designing big structures just because you could is long gone. <laughs> and like, we have to be more considered about what we do as designers. And so that's more of how that's changed for me and how it's changed my approach to things. So in my mind, I'd hate to be referred to as like a architect in like 10 years. I feel like I failed if that ever becomes like a reference to me. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and um, Shreya, I know you mentioned that you weren't like super sure what you what interior architecture was, but yeah, has your idea of interior architecture has that how has that changed since um, RISD? Um, yeah, yeah. Well, so around interior architecture, even in RISD itself, like within the community, there's always like, a, what is this major? Like, what are they even studying? Um, just because it's such a niche field that's come up and it's probably one of the few programs that are, um, I mean, out there for you to study. So my idea, I mean, my thought process of interior architecture earlier was that it is obviously, I understood the part where it's about redesigning from within. But what I didn't understand at that time, and now I know, is that it has a lot of obviously focus on sustainability, adaptive reuse, um, all terms that were new to me coming from high school. And um, just being able to incorporate that into our buildings or what our projects are, I think I've learned a lot more. Um, but just like echoing what Todd said, that I do not want to become a practicing architect after this. So sort of my um, future plans were to go into conservation of architecture. So therefore sustainable studies and interior architecture is what would lead me to that rather than learning how to build buildings from ground up. Um, so that was my thought process on why interior architecture and what's changed now, but definitely just having the angle of like sustainability and adaptive reuse and working with materials that are like fungus or like, you know, just mushroom paper or stuff like that is really interesting because I think that's where, uh, I mean, we're all headed in the future. So just adding that into our curriculum. Absolutely. I feel like I'm learning so much about architecture actually in this webinar i love it thank you um so we have a little we have just about five minutes left so i am going to take maybe two more questions um this of course very important question what is the workload like <laughs> you know um is it is pulling all-nighters normal is it normal only because of procrastination? <laughs> Which I think is an interesting little added part to that question. Um, but yeah, what's the workload like? Um, let me see. It is, it's pretty high, it's up there. <laughs> um, I personally don't like pulling on editors and I won't if I don't have to. And I would say if I could give like a number, I don't think I pull more than like three a semester, probably just for like finals and midterms. But um, I've just been getting a lot easier on myself in terms of like workload and what I'm producing for a class. Um, I've learned the world has never ended when I didn't come in with something. <laughs> and that's kind of kept me through it and learning that there's like 
like after I pull an all nighter, I'm never at my best. Like it would have just been better if I slept and came in the next week. It tends to just ruin me for a while. And like that always happens. But I think, at least in my experience, I've seen professors get a lot more comfortable with coming into class with something as opposed to like, not necessarily like entire project, but like just seeing progress in your work, at least in like advanced studios. And I think that's like one mentality to have that I see coming up a lot more often. So it's never up, it's never been pushed to a point where I need to have like an all-nighter. It's like say one week I'm really focusing on my liberals because I have a midterm there. So unfortunately my studio will work the lack a little bit. But that's okay because I made like some moves and I came into class and I was able to talk about it. And then like next week I fish I shift focus on my studio. And, like maybe my liberals get like a little less. So like it does that kind of push and pull at least. I mean, personally speaking, I have pulled a few, I mean, a fair share of all-nighters, but that's also just because I like doing a lot more things as well, like on the side. So it's also like having different interests or like, you know, just like having a job or stuff like that. Um, but I think all-nighters, it just depends on how you work as a person very honestly at the end of the day it's all about your work ethic and what are you more comfortable with i'm actually more comfortable working through the night than i'm waking up early so that's just about me as a person so i think everybody has their own schedule and the way they all handle it because i know a couple of people in my studio that have never pulled a single all-nighter because they like working early or like they wake up early and they work so it's just about how you are i guess as a person and how you like to manage your time or what do you like doing extra on the side or stuff like that. Absolutely. And I just kind of want to chime in too that um, it's definitely acknowledged across RISD that architecture has the most work, has the heaviest workload, the most tangible workload, because in um, some other majors, especially in painting, it's very like self-guided how you know, if you make a painting that's like very int intricate patterns that like you have to paint like little small areas, that's gonna take a lot longer versus someone who maybe just makes like a really wet on wet gestural painting and it takes them three hours and they're done. Um, so I think architecture is a lot of work, but um, I think that a lot of the times all nighters come from not even procrastination, but perfectionism. And I think so many artists are perfectionists and it's certainly a, uh, what's the expression, a two-edged sword, <laughs> you know? I think, you know, of course it's, there's strengths to being a perfectionist and wanting things to be the best they can be. But I think also sometimes you do have to rein that in to complete projects, especially knowing that a lot of the projects you're doing while you're in college is to learn, you know, it's not like it's your retrospective of yourself as an artist at 70 and you're going to be including this work, you know, it's all kind of meant for learning. So it doesn't have to be perfect, you know? So I think letting go of that perfectionism can help with doing all nighters versus not. Um, but yeah, really great question. And you still have a lot of work in architecture. <laughs> um, so yeah, I think that, you know, this was all really fantastic questions. And I hope that this was all really helpful to you all. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think if we can end on one more question. Um, yeah, I, I see that um, Clarence answered this with, with, but you know, through written response. So thank you, Clarence. That's awesome. <laughs> but I want to pose it maybe to Taj and Shreya as well, just to kind of round out this um, webinar. Um, has your ability to represent space, think about space in three dimensions, or just putting design ideas on paper or CAD, you know, has that increased from your training? And are there any examples worth mentioning? Um, well, I think, yeah, definitely our abilities will and have increased like every semester, it's just more and more. And the main thing is that our professors love like sketch models or like 
stuff that's just tangible, but it's, you know, it's made faster. It's like 10 minute models you're making. So you end up thinking a lot faster when it comes to designing things as well. I think as a RISD student, we have been given, or like we've been taught the ability to be able to produce like 10 to 15 designs in like a minutes rather than, you know, taking hours and hours to go ahead because just the way our gestural drawings work now, or like just how you're trying to work with the space itself. Um, I guess your thought process and thinking has changed a lot. And I guess an example could be, um, I interned this summer with an architecture firm and they used to give me work. And by, I think within three to four hours, I would be done with exactly what they've told me for the day. So at after a point, they were actually out of work to give me. So they'd be like, okay, you can like take the rest of the day off because they actually didn't have anything else to give me anymore. And that's when I actually realized how much RISD has taught me in general and just about how fast-paced things are usually. Everybody's doing everything together. But then when you actually step out into the real world is when you actually realize that, you know, wait a minute, like I can actually finish this stuff in half the time now just because the ideation of like the space or like just different ideas are being churned out literally minutes after minutes. Um, that's just my experience, like. Um, I think for me, like one of the earlier times I realized that I was like learning something is I TA for pre-college. And like, I was able to like relay information pretty easily. And I was like, oh, that makes sense. I guess it really did stick to you, Taj. And like that felt really good being able to cheat someone else. Uh, but then even more recently, I'm taking a class that's like integral building systems. Uh, so it's like less about building a building and more about following rules in terms of like zoning and stuff. And I was able to like design something for that pretty quickly and like draft it. And like, I was like really impressed with myself for a second because I was like, oh, this was like, not easy, it definitely was not easy, but it was like, it kind of just came to me to where I like, I think normally I like spent a lot of time like thinking instead of like drawing but it was like able to like really get an idea across and that felt pretty good. Although I didn't like how, I was, I was like, it was tangible to see how much I was learning about Rhino <laughs> to where I was like even able to do that quickly. So that felt weird. I don't think I liked it because it just meant I spent a lot of time in Rhino, but I think in that general sense, it was kind of rewarding. Absolutely. Yeah, I think, yeah, exactly. You just get this kind of like, just speed from that experience. Absolutely. Well, so that's time. Thank you to everyone who joined us from, you know, tuning in from all different time zones. Thank you for making time for this. Thank you to all of our current RISD students for giving us your input, sharing your experiences. I know I really appreciated it. So I know everyone else must have as well. Um, but yeah, be sure to um, check out all of the upcoming open RISD events this week. We're going to have so many. There's stuff about fine arts and design and careers and academic resources, all this cool stuff. So be sure to keep attending more events. You can learn so much more about RISD than you can just from like, I don't know, our website, you know. <laughs> um, but yeah, thank you again to everyone and have a great rest of your evening if you're on the East Coast, but afternoon, morning. <laughs> thank you, everyone. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Bye, Thanks everyone. For